Well, I brought uh, motivation issues today. Uh, I have a limited time, so I'm going to have uh, uh, brief uh, introductions, uh, introducing the motivation theories. The topic of the teacher's motivation in international Christian schools, I uh, try to make a topic like this. However, uh, not only international schools, but also the Christian-based uh, schools. Not only in Korea, but also, I believe, all of the you know, schools in Christian-based. We have to concern on this issue, I, I believe. Uh, here, I brought motivations, uh, theory, and issues uh, for the teacher and students in classroom. Uh, we, as a Christian educator and also educator, we should know the how, uh, how to motivate the students and teachers in educational settings. And, and motivation theory uh, has had a significant impact on education. And Christian education has focused on the teacher's uh, vocations and teaching content. However, uh, we have a little, uh, little attention to how specific reinforcement and motivation theories influence teachers in Christian school. So I brought uh, you know, big questions like this. How do we invite all teachers in an educational setting? And how do we motivate uh, teachers? And in this content, I uh, will consider the motivation theory for students and also teachers. And I uh, brought these questions in how to motivate students in international uh, Christian schools. The first, how uh, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation realize in international Christian schools. And so I'm going to talk about the intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation theories. And can extrinsic motivation eventually motivate students in Christian school? And can an in, uh, incentive program motivate teachers and make a positive difference? And will this extrinsic motivation, while successful in a short run, eventually under, undermine the long-term goals of education? And what are some of the problems with using extrinsic motivation in international Christian school? Um, first, I'm going to introduce uh, and uh, we're going to talk, we're going to uh, think about the intrinsic motivations theory. And uh, this, this decide, the intrinsic motivation, he said, is demonstrated when people engage in an activity for its own sake and not because of any extrinsic reward. And another definition, is, you know, his studies, Leshway Lesh, talks about the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation engage uh, classroom teachers in continuing professional education activity. And another, Le Lepper states that the intrinsic, intrinsic motivation is based on a desire for com competence, competence and autonomy. And intrinsic motivation has clear goal and provides on uh, ambiguous feedback. Uh, is it, uh, the, here is an interesting uh, studies. Mellon 1981, he studies uh, the article is toward the theory of intrinsically motivating instruction. And in it, the, he examined uh, why children find mindless video games motivating to the point of addiction. Wait, he found interesting things. The four reason, first one is the goal are clear, goals are clear. And second one is the feedback is uh, in uh, instantaneous. And third is the level of difficulty changes to match the skills of the player. And fourth is the game engaged the imagination with an element of fantasy. Well, recently I, I studied with uh, uh, how 
why the reason of the youth uh, uh, try to suiciding, and uh, we try to uh, uh, the develop the uh, game uh, based uh, the problem solving, the use uh, so, uh, suicide, and the, that is this study also will give uh, the uh, the insights of uh, how can we motivate the students and uh, develop the you know curriculums uh, in classrooms, and Melon's concludes the goals and feedback and optimism challenge and imagination take together those conditions allows complete concentration on text at hand. And another, uh, the two more things, I'm gonna skip this one. And the second is the extrinsic uh, uh, motivations. Intrinsic and another, uh, other's uh, perspective is extrinsic motivation. And last way, and uh, he said that extrinsic motivation is driven by the prospect of reward or outcome that uh, bears not direct relationship to the behavior. And whereas people volunt uh, voluntarily engage in activities that are challenging and meaningful, they normally do not spend time on things that are boring, difficult, or distasteful. And by contrast, Extrinsic motivation is a kind of economic transaction, while intrinsic motivation is an expression of personal desire or value. And think about it, these uh, motivations are so important. You know, we already know the, the behavior theory uh, has uh, found the extrin ext extrinsic motivations perspective. And, uh, and third, uh, here is the you know literature base of the motivation, and that is the human uh, uh, human motivation theory. You probably know the Abraham Maslow's uh, 1940s studies. A theory of human motivations group human needs into five basic categories, array, uh, arrayed in hierarchical function. First one basic is the physiological needs, and second is the safety needs, and third is the belongingness and love needs, and fourth is the esteem needs, and finally needs for self-actualization. That is uh, the human motivation base, depends on the human's need. And how can Maslow's motivation theory apply to teachers' motivation? And that is an uh, interesting question to me as well. And here, uh, sorry, I lost one pages. And uh, last way said, today teachers and administrators observing the increasing numbers of children who arrive at education hungry, scared, or emotionally neglect are well aware that unfulfilled basic needs can undercut academic learning. And leaders, including teachers, should feel for, uh, reform by viewing the challenge uh, change process as an opportunity to align the needs of education with the needs of the people who work and learn there. Yes, I think we can apply this uh, the huge the theory into the, our classroom. And my argument is, uh, is, is this, uh, two uh, theories for teachers' motivations. And first one is the expandency theory, and the, the other one is the goal setting theory. Expandency theory directly links uh, with issues of teacher and organizational capacity. And draft the study is, uh, is like this, uh, uh, depth and mercy uh, studies. Expandency theory uh, suggests that motivation depends on the expectations of individuals about their ability to perform tasks and receive desirely words. And second is the goal setting theory translates into the idea that clear and specific students' achievement goals are more motivating for teachers than unclear or conflicting goals. 
And we, we as a teacher probably consider these motivations, uh, the, the theories, to motivate uh, the students uh, in our class. And Kelly et al. Uh, provides awards for many goals could diffuse efforts and responsibilities. So teachers would lose focus on what steps they could take to achieve the goals. And school leaders so should recognize that teachers' individual actions positively influence teachers' behaviors and values consequences can be achieved if the goals are met. And it is a uh, you know, final uh, session of my articles and studies. And teachers' motivation in Christian school. And how then are teachers' motivation uh, fulfilled? Are there some common motivational structures that may influence teachers' response to classroom for international Christian school? There are three categories of teachers' motivation. One, first one is the psychic. Uh, rewards. And the second is the teacher's empowerment. And third is a job enrich, uh, enrichment. Another one is autonomy and freedom. Well, as a leader of the school and administrators and the principals, how can we motivate our uh, teachers in classroom? That is the big issues. And why don't we th think about these issues uh, in Christian base? Of course, we uh, talks nowadays talks about uh, uh, leadership, transformational leadership, not the transactional leadership, giving and take. But uh, we uh, per persuade the other person join in the big thought, basic idea of passions, so that we can lead all the followers. That is the transformational leadership. It's the same line. I can we can think about those. However, here is the, there are three categories of teachers' motivation. First one is the uh, uh, psychic rewards for teachers' motivations. Lottie and teachers are motivated primarily by the psychic rewards. That is, what kept them doing going was the prospect of the students coming back three years later to say how much they had appreciated the class. That is big motivation for teachers. <coughs> Excuse me. And teachers had some goals for their teaching that went beyond more uh, mastery of the official curriculum. And uh, the similar studies last way said some of the extra goals were more and focused on connecting students with the wider world of learning and to teach all students. And second is that we should consider here is the uh, empowerment, empowerment for teachers' motivation. Teacher power, well, nowadays in Korean education setting, where teacher doesn't have any authority and power, well, uh, that is a big issue. How can we give the teacher the authority and power? Teacher power and empowerment can be a motivation component for teachers. And study here, the empowerment is the delegation of power or authority to subordinate in an organization. In this view, increasing employer power height, uh, heightens motivation for task accomplishment because people improve their own effectiveness when choosing how to do a task and by using their creativity. Uh, similar uh, here, but I'm going to uh, see. Here. Uh, yes. And, uh, and here is the three theoretical uh, orientations are uh, characterized by the literature on teacher control of power. And uh, that is the, another uh, the dimension of the you know, power and studies of motivations. Motivational power and relational power and power as an expanding supply rather than as a fixed quality in limited uh, supplies. And uh, well, here is, you can find that uh, the three, the, the motivation power and also relational power in the manuscript. So I'm going to skip this one. 
and relational power views that one party has power over another or has the ability to make a person do something he or she would not otherwise do. These conceptions of power is the classic zero-sum uh, gain, where, uh, where one person gains power at the expense. And third one is a power as an expanding supply rather than as a fixed quality in the supplies. And third one is the commitment, enrichment uh, for uh, teachers' motivations. And uh, Frederick Hotzberg, uh, uh, in his book, Work and the Nature of Man, saw job enrichment as central to motivations. He distinguished enrichment from simply uh, adding more rut routine and often merely dual task to uh, tedious jobs. And enrichment means here uh, giving workers more freedom and authority, more feedback, and gather challenges while making them more accountable and letting them use more skill. And that is the three, the basic uh, suggestions uh, to the, the Christian-based schools. How can we, how to motivate uh, teachers? And conclusion here. And we can learn from this, uh, the small uh, studies, articles, and the teachers are motivated uh, by intrinsically and extrinsically. And these intrinsic and extrin extrinsic motivator play a role in teachers' behavior and education outcomes. And students also are motivated to reach a particular goal when they uh, believe it will have desirable uh, personal outcomes, you know, material or psych uh, physiological rewards, etc. And when they believe it is attainable. And to approve student teachers' motivation in Christian schools, and we have to have a clear goal and specific achievement goals and empowerment for teachers and work enrichment. And rewards, depending on consequences, can motivate teachers. But this kind of ex extrinsic motivation has a limited limitation in the long term. So uh, it's the same line of the leadership studies, you know, transactional has a limitations. However, the transformational, giving the deep motivations for the, the broad goal and going together, persuading followers, you know, we can have uh, the goal together. And school leaders have internal motivation that determine how teachers will respond to the faithful participation. And that nature of this internal motivation will have a major impact the teacher's response to Christian-based schools. So uh, again, I brought this issue, probably you, 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 you may uh, heard these issues, motivations. But think about how can I motivate, motivate it? Or how can I motivate students? And as a teacher, how can we motivate by the school leaders and school board? And that is uh, the question I brought uh, in these articles. Thank you.